director of the Met, and uh, it's Met singular at the Opera House, and he has been uh, uh, one of the most colorful figures in that world of extremely colorful people. Uh, he was last, uh, you may remember him on the front pages when he uh, fired Maria Callas and lived to tell the tale. Uh, that's probably not the thing he's most interested in being noted for, but will you welcome anyway the remarkable Mr. Rudolph Bing. <laughs> Did the music sound familiar at all? It did, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's from an opera. Yeah. Uh, a poeta. Yes, of course. A light comedy. Of course, of course. It would be anyway, the way the gentleman there played it. <laughs> oh. Mr. Bing, I have always thought that of all the areas of the so-called theater, if you will allow me to include the opera in that, that, um, that anyone could go into, the opera would be about the roughest, because somehow... If any one thing goes wrong in an opera, it seems like it's a disaster. Um, in a did. play, you can add lib or something else, but an opera is pretty fragile uh, in that sense, isn't it? Uh, yes, disaster is the right word. It mm -hmm. usually is. But uh, somehow we seem to muddle through. And uh, I don't know what you call rough. I mean, the music is rough. Yes. And uh, the singers are difficult, too. But the combination is, in the end, not unattractive. Would it be safe to say that the most temperamental performers are in the opera? Uh, I don't know what you call temperamental. I've been asked this question for 20 years mm -hmm. now. Uh, I don't think they are temperamental. I think they are nervous and frightened. And if your livelihood depended on two vocal cords, you probably would be frightened too. But an actor's... Uh, livelihood depends on that too, but you, you don't so much get less, that. much less, because well. singers very frequently are not actors; they are just singers, mm -hmm. and uh, their riches, fame, whatever depends really comes from a throat disease, more or less. How do you mean that? Well, I mean their vocal cords are different from yours. That's all. Are they? I, I asked an opera singer that one time. I said, "Is there some? If I had the right training." No. Hundreds and hundreds of hours, could I... No. They're born different. No, they're born different. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, it's a throat disease, in a way. <coughs> and... Uh, <laughs> some of them, some of them... And they get rich and famous through this throat disease and make a lot of money and get mm -hmm. front-page pictures on Time magazine and whatever it is. And some of them really think then that they are somebody. Whereas, in fact... And that leads to trouble. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're from Vienna. I was born in Vienna, but they last so long ago that it hardly counts anymore. <laughs> I, see. I, I just think that if you could get together all of the colorful people who've come out of Vienna, it's fantastic. Hedy Lamarr and Sigmund Freud and yourself and Otto Preminger, and, well, I and I've only begun the list. I'm uh, afraid I cannot put myself on the level of Sigmund Freud. I wouldn't mind Hedy Lamarr, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, no. Yes, I do come from Vienna, but as I said, it's a long time ago. I've been here 20 years now. You've, you've been at the Met 20 years? Yeah. Yes. Why did you fire Maria Callas? I've forgotten. God, really? I mean, this goes back 10 years now. Ah, yes, but the drama's still there. Oh, <laughs> not for me. It isn't? I adore Maria. We are great friends. But, uh, oh, this is pouring to tears, this question. No, it isn't. Oh. No, it's, it's, really? as a matter of fact, it's interesting no. to tears. No. <laughs> well, I really hardly remember it. I, well, it wasn't really Maria. She was at that time married to a difficult Italian gentleman who as so frequently felt that by being difficult, he was making her a star. As it happened, Maria Carlos was a star when she was born. She's one of the great artistic personalities I've and greatest artistic personalities I've ever met. A wonderful singer, a wonderful actress, a wonderful artist, musician. And uh, so I fired her. Oh, <laughs> that's the route to being no, fired. No, we, uh, we had difficulties. <coughs> we had difficulties. I forget, really. I think it concerned the tour or something. She didn't want to go on tour, but had agreed to go on tour. 
and I had to know whether she was going on tour and that she wouldn't tell me. So I just said... Excuse well, me, Dick, may I ask Mr. Bing something? You yes. said if I thought of anything... Are you going to ask him if he stole anything? I'd no, because I'd, <laughs> I'd, interviewed, I'd interviewed Mr. Bing, and I thought the story about Maria Callas, the reason you and she had uh, the feud, or you fired her, was because you threw in two traviatas when she was doing a serious, dramatic Macbeth, and she didn't want those yes. trivial traviatas. Yes. The, only, the only difference is that it wasn't thrown in. It was carefully discussed oh. over hours of spacing, how many days you need before and how many days you need after. And you know, this is an old game, and we all know it at the Met, and it was carefully agreed upon, and she agreed to a certain arrangement. And then she didn't want to go on tour. I personally don't blame her for not wanting to go. I don't want to go on tour either. But she had to go. And Macbeth was a difficult role to fill, so I had to know. And uh, she wouldn't give me an answer. And so eventually I had no alternative but to tell her, well, the contract is cancelled. And But this is decades ago. I forget how long it is. 1958. Replaced the... I mean, <laughs> Well, this is 12 it seems years. only yesterday, though. I can still see that picture of her. Well, the Korean War disappeared from the front pages. I didn't know what I was letting myself in for. Mm. It really started a terrific sort of do. I quite enjoyed it. But we made long made up. Maria came back to the Met, to the old house still, and we are great friends, and I adore her. She's a wonderful artist. Why does Beverly Sills not sing for the Met? Well, not every artist can sing at the Met. No doubt Miss Sills will sing one day at the Met. I'm, I'm gone very soon. See, these are my last two years. Yes, you have two years. Uh, Quite. It's not going to seem the same without you. Well, it may be better. And uh, as I said, not every artist can at the same time sing at the Met. We have Miss Sutherland, that particular part for these particular parts, who's not doing too badly. So we'll just see. What kind of psychology do you use uh, on the uh, opera star when they're being outrageously temperamental? Suppose it's an hour before curtain time and you have all those people who bought all those tickets and they're out front and, uh, and, and she says, I, I just don't feel like going on tonight. This must have happened or I have a slight sore throat. No, that hasn't happened. What has happened is oh, also years ago, a very famous Italian soprano, we have very clear arrangement about curtain calls who gets a call, when and when and who together and when alone and all. It's mm -hmm. all prearranged and very professionally handled. And this lady sang Aida and suddenly demanded a solo call at a time when there were no solo calls arranged. And she said if, she, if I didn't give her this solo call after the next scene, whatever it was, she wouldn't go on. So I was called, went to her dressing room and said, Madame, whatever her name was, you have four minutes to go, and if you don't go on, I'll cancel the performance, I'll sue you for the whole receipts, and I'll tell the press why. Now there are only three minutes left. And she went on. In other, words, come back. in other words, you use the kid glove treatment. Exactly. <laughs> but is there, this, is there one generalization you can make that covers all artists like that and their temperament. David Susskind was here last night and said that all actors are subterranean and children and dolts and in effect he said that. I'm sorry, Tella, you had to hear it. I'm sorry you had to hear it. And uh, then he may thought of a few exceptions. Um. No, I, I don't really agree. I think one of the problems is that, as we said before, particularly singers, more than actors, their fame rises more rapidly because there are very few really great singers around. And uh, some of them come from extremely humble background. And suddenly, within a year, the front page of New York uh, of Times or Time magazine and interviews and uh, are received at the White House and at recordings and make half a million dollars a year, that has to be digested. That's not easily digested for somebody who can barely read or write. And there are quite a few of them who... and. Uh, that leads to very difficult situations when people really cannot quite absorb the fantastic rise of fame and money and wealth and all that. Do you envy them in any way ever when you sit out front and see the adulation that they're getting and see the spotlight on them and hear the God cheers? Heaven. These poor creatures. <laughs> are you including me in that? Or? Not necessarily. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> uh, they really are 
trembling every night before they go out. Any high note that goes sour is known the next morning in Milano and their career is on the rocks and they sit at home and watch their vocal cords through strangely arranged mirrors. They are pitiful creatures. Some of them very nice, very hardworking, very conscientious. Some of them wonderful singers, great voices. You know, it's not an enviable job. Do they ever invite you into their homes? I have, in 20 years that I've been in this job, never once set foot in a singer's home. How about that, folks? <laughs> I'm hearing a message from my local stations. We'll, we'll be right back. Stay with us. doing that tonight. You are doing that tonight? Mm. Can you use any of these boys? <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> Are you ever amused by a, a catastrophe on stage at an opera, or is it just too big a headache for you? And... No, I'm always amused. Can you think of... I'm well, always amused. Uh, I don't want, to get, want you to get me wrong. I'm very fond of some of our singers. I like them. They're awfully nice and friendly people, and as mm -hmm. I said, hardworking. But I don't envy them. Don't envy them. Don't envy them. Do you have any desire to, to be on the stage yourself as a performer? None. Have you ever felt like... None. I, I started off as a singer. I mean, as a boy, I, I started, I tried to learn singing, but fortunately my voice wasn't big enough, so I didn't make it. What were you, a baritone? Baritone, a baritone. Mm -hmm. you know, if I was a tenor, I wouldn't talk to you. <laughs> Clear that up for me. Is it true that tenors are stranger than anyone else on earth? They're rarer. They're rarer? Than anyone else on earth, yeah. And a good tenor is something very special and very rare and uh, very wonderful, but not enviable. What, what's, what's the worst thing that ever happened in a production you were responsible for? Have you ever had the scenery collapse on a large lady or a... But that wouldn't be terrible. That wouldn't be that, terrible. That would be desirable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that, mm -hmm. no. I can't, I'm not good at anecdotes, I don't remember. I remember in another, in another opera company's performance, not on, on tour, that in Tristan, in the first act, the sail is lifted up, you see, on the boat. Mm -hmm. And then when Isolde wants to sail to come down again, down came the trees of the second act. Which <laughs> was awkward. It's hard to ad lib, isn't it? It's hard opera? to ad lib. Yeah. yeah. Peter Ustinov tells a story, and I don't know which opera this would be, where uh, a lady throws herself off a balcony and they had staged it so she went out of sight behind some shrubbery and had a concealed trampoline out of sight so she wouldn't be hurt. Only the trampoline was a little tighter than it should have been and she was... <laughs> and so was she, I think. And... Uh, also, she was heavier than they had counted on uh, or remembered her, mm -hmm. and uh, she committed suicide and left off and went out of sight and then reappeared momentarily. <laughs> and, uh, well, I can't tell you what opera, because it, every other opera, somebody jumps from a bed. <laughs> yes, whether, whether or not it was a theory that opera stars, female opera stars, had to be heavy, because years ago, didn't they all used to be quite large, like yes. the one that went on and, a and rightly so, because there's no question that this acts as a sounding board. And uh, one of the troubles of Maria Callas, and we talked so much before, is she lost weight to such an extent that part of the voice went with it. See? It's just, uh, but I was asked the other day about the contents of an opera. Could I, in a, in a nutshell, give the story of the opera? And I said, well, I, it's very difficult, but I would say it's infidelity at high frequency. <laughs> that sums it up. That should be the title of your sums, biography. Sums it usually up. Uh, it, I have heard that since you have been in charge at the Met, the average dress size in leading ladies has gone from 20 down to a 14. Uh, uh, th yes, but it's not exactly my responsibility, just... <laughs> <laughs> ladies' sizes have just diminished uh, over the years. You haven't introduced calisthenics or, or no, anything? No, that no, would, uh, no, 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 I have not. I see. How do you feel about booing at the opera? I think it's scandalous. I think it's scandalous. I think it's a sign of the desperate deterioration of manners in general. Yes. And uh, if you don't like something, either don't come or don't applaud. That's your privilege. But everything else is unbearable. <laughs> we had, uh, we had last Sunday. Yesterday, when was Sunday? Yesterday? No, the day before yesterday, we had uh, the Who yes. perform at the Met, the rock group. And I found the audience, I wouldn't say it was our Monday night audience, but uh, very courteous, very pleasant, 
Really? Totally cooperative. I stopped dozens of them smoking. They were very polite about it. I, I, I enjoyed the performance also. I, I, oh, you did? Okay. I can't, I don't think that it will immediately replace Mozart or Verdi. But uh, <laughs> it was entertaining. I asked you about booing because I had a guest on the show one time, John Simon, the critic, who violently booed at the Met when uh, he just thought that... Uh, All critics do. But, <laughs> but literally, boo? Oh, like no, that. they write it then the next morning, you see. I'm used to that. For but he years. really booed. He stood up and booed. He, he just Did thought he? the performance was, was tacky, he said, and he thought that the artist deserved uh, to know that it was... Mm -hmm. that they were getting third-rate I don't third know the gentleman. Kids. I don't know who he is. John Simon? No. Uh, he reviews for New York magazine. Does he? I don't know. <laughs> well, he thinks he does. <laughs> you re really don't know him. What do you call, mean, the New Yorker? No, New York magazine. There's don't a, know it. There's, another, there's a magazine called New York magazine. John Simon reviews yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that when he booed, um, it was, I guess, at the end of the first act, and then... Uh, when he came back to his seat, a lot of people were kind of laying for him. He had a feeling maybe you had sent them there. I, I didn't even know he exists. <laughs> Did you know that Rudolf Thing worked for John Lewis once? Not John L. Lewis, the labor leader, but a store in London during the, the war? The John Lewis partnership, yes. of course, yes. Did you know that? I did know that, yes. It was in the New Yorker uh, profile on you. Well, the New Yorker. Yes, New yes, Yorker, that's... not the one that that mythical man works for. <laughs> no, I, I run a department store, uh, mm -hmm. Peter Jones on Sloan Square. It's a long time ago. Uh, and uh, the department I really liked because it reminded me of opera was ladies hairdressing. See? And I was taught, I was called in, and, somebody, and I was taught to put my fingers through a curl and say, but madam, it springs back beautifully. I still don't know what it means, but I did it very successfully. <laughs> that's the secret to success in, uh, in that. It has bounced. What has bound? The hair. Oh, I see. <laughs> also, that lady who jumped off the balcony. <laughs> what advice would you give to your successor? You've been through so many years of uh, turmoil and union problems there, and, and uh, people have called you tyrannical and uh, all, just all sorts of things. Uh, uh, Mr. Carey, that's a difficult question because mm. it's, a, it's a tough job. It's a difficult job, and it comprises and unending variety of responsibilities so what advice would I give him on what in what area I can't answer that in one uh, question he ought to have a sense of humor in the first place I presume he knows something about opera mm -hmm. I, I hope he does and I assume he does and uh, he's got to get good good nerves and work pretty hard can I check one thing with you uh, I, I heard uh, you're known for your for your wit and there was a time when you were reportedly having trouble with, in a labor negotiation and one of the people that uh, was arguing with you raised his voice considerably and de delivered himself of a sentence that took several minutes at the end of which you said would you mind screaming that again <laughs> yeah, that uh, long ago did that happen yes that happened and did he <laughs> that happened no he, they laughed which uh, helped the meeting it did it broke the ice yeah, they laughed we, we have a message for our local station we'll be right back stay with us Mr. Bing, when you said that you had never been to the homes of any, in all these years, of any of those uh, stars, is that because they did not invite you, or do you have a rule to not mingle with the, with the performers? Well, come to think of it, they didn't invite me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but I, I obviously made it pretty clear from the beginning. I, while I like them, and I'm very fond of them, and very friendly with them, I think it's a wrong thing to do to get mm -hmm. personally involved with people whom you work with. And... Uh, I got on pretty well for 20 years that way. Is your life completely wrapped up in opera? By yes, that I mean, have you been, do you go to the movies? What movies have you seen? Very rarely. I haven't been to the movies in years. I never watch television. I've never seen your show. No <laughs> and you consider yourself a cultured man? No. <laughs> I occasionally, well, I just happen to come home at that time, which is rare, mm -hmm. I occasionally we shudder see the Ed Sullivan show and I immediately <laughs> switch it off again. <laughs> uh, uh, have any, would you allow any of your people to appear on the Sullivan show? Would I have no, no right to prevent them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't own them, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> they are free time, they are free to do whatever they like. 
That's interesting about the movies because the the country, in fact, the world is sort of movie crazy yeah, these yeah, days. What, yeah. what was the last movie you no. saw? Would you be able to recall? I think it was Ronnie Claire with an old friend of mine. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, it's quite a quite a while ago. Uh, not because there are, I mean I'm sure there are many excellent movies around. I just haven't got the time. I'm four or five times a week at the opera, and when I'm the two or nights I'm off, I either go home or go to see friends or something. I just haven't got the time. What's the story that Bridget Nielsen once put you on your income tax as a dependent? Yes, she's so right. Yes. How did that happen? Well, I don't know. I was just told <laughs> she's yeah. dependent. She put me down. Uh, income tax. <laughs> uh, another great singer. Mm -hmm. Another great singer. We have uh, there are many American great uh, great singers. I had one this afternoon for discussion. Giorgio Tozzi, uh, Teresa Stratus, whom no doubt you know, is Canadian, but nevertheless, we have another. You know, Richard Tucker, who's just been celebrated all over the place since his 25th anniversary, and many more. Uh, we have now. A, majority of American singers, as it should be. So I hope that the Metropolitan will never go chauvinistic and will always have the great singers the world has to offer, mm -hmm. as it always had, and which I was lucky to be able to continue in my time. What will you do when you leave the Met? Oh, I want to be president of a university. <laughs> How do you apply for that? I just ask. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You're using my facilities to exactly, ask, though. You may exactly. Very, I was hoping you would ask. may very well get an offer. <laughs> That's interesting that you don't see any movies. I don't know why I dwell on that. But if you saw Mr. Tava uh, Savalas on the street, you would not recognize him then. I fear I might not. I'm ashamed to admit I might yeah. not. No. Even though we have a head in common? <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is better, sir. At least younger. But, uh, no, I, I think that the establishing of a bridge to the young, younger generation is one of the great challenges of our time. Mm -hmm. And to do another Aida or Trovatore, I just can't bear to think of it. Is that so? That's interesting, because you've been accused of being too conservative in your repertoire. And, and well, I'm conservative in my repertoire because it's the only thing the people buy tickets for. The Metropolitan has no subsidy. We live on the tickets we sell. And uh, nothing else but Aida or Trovatore or this type of repertoire sells tickets. Has an opera ever made money? What? I mean, an opera, has an opera house ever made money? <laughs> no, certainly not. No opera house ever has made money. No opera house ever can make ends meet and never will. And never will. And if you, this is like, if you ask how much a yacht costs, don't, don't buy a yacht. Mm -hmm. If you ask how much opera costs, don't go into opera. It's an expensive business and it should be and it must be. And it must lose money. And when I came, we had a deficit of half a million dollars, and I've worked very hard at it, and it's now up to four million a year. <laughs> That's as fine a tribute as anyone could have. After this message, we'll be right back.